Hello, everyone. Global health is a topic that's on just about everyone's mind. Today, we're going to learn about the United States' first FDA-approved treatment for severe malaria, IV, or testimony. With us today is Dr. David Humphrey, who works at the U.S. Army as the licensing officer for this medical technology. He's going to answer three quick questions about IV or testimony, how it came to be, how it went from a discovery by the U.S. Army for the warfighter to something available for families and the non-military population. Welcome, Dr. Humphrey. Hi, Ms. Shea. How are you? Hi, Dr. Humphrey. Okay, so let's get to it. Getting FDA approval can be very hard to navigate. How did our testing go from discovery to distribution as an FDA-approved drug? Did the Army do this all by itself? That's a great question, Ms. Shea. This was really a team effort that occurred over many, many years. So the basic science originated from research done in the 1980s. You know, we're talking 30, 40 years ago at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. Um, at that time, they were screening uh, compounds and derivatives with potential efficacy against malaria. And so over the next 20 years, there were different compounds that were tested and eventually arrived at a formulation that had an increased shelf life. And this was IV artesanate. And a patent application was filed at that time. And then at that point, it transitioned from Walter Reed Army Institute of Research to the advanced development team at the U.S. Army Medical Material Development Activity. There, there were clinical trials that were conducted, and all the data was reviewed by project managers and team there at USAMDA. And then some years later, around 2017, a cooperative research and development agreement was done with our company partner, Omniboss. After that, Omniboss worked with the Medical Tech Transfer Office, that is us, to enter into a license agreement for the patent rights as well as the ability to cross-reference the Army's IMD filing. And that, ultimately, is what led to FDA approval in May 2020, and now IV artesanate is the only FDA-approved treatment for severe malaria. Awesome. The military is responsible for the nation's safety. How does this carry over into vaccine development? That's a great question, Ms. Shea. The Army has a duty to protect the military personnel who are protecting our nation. And that includes the health and well-being of those military personnel. So, for example, some of our service members may be exposed to infectious diseases that are not prevalent in the United States. Therefore, the Army and the military must come up with medical solutions to protect those service members. And that could be protection from exposure to neglected tropical diseases um, that might be prevalent in other nations. So in that way, and because we can only provide treatments to the military that are FDA approved, uh, we end up with solutions for the U.S. military, U.S. civilians, as well as for civilians in other countries where the diseases may be endemic. Wow. Thank you. Okay. So uh, moving on to uh, question three and our last final question. How can entrepreneurs develop medical technology from the U.S. Army? Yeah. So. Our office at the Medical Tech Transfer Office, we look for commercial partners for all of the areas of which the Army has expertise, diagnostics, medical IT, devices, vaccines, and therapeutics. And we can assist in different phases of development. So it can be at the research and development stage, test and evaluation. There even is the potential for additional funding from the Army or the government if these are important projects for the military. And then the technologies are significantly de-risked. So you can seek a license from us or one of the other agreements that I discussed before. So we really want to work with you. So please reach out to us and look at our website to see some of the available technologies. You mentioned a website. What's the best way for people to follow up with you or to reach out to you? Are you on LinkedIn at all? Yes, I can be reached at LinkedIn at USAMRDC. And I'm happy to discuss some of the potential technologies that we can work on together. All right. Thank you, Dr. Humphrey. Thanks for chatting with us. Thank you so much, Michelle.